Hello everyone and welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to be checking out a 12 volt 2000 watt inverter from Bouge RV. So let's open it up and see what we got. Alright, when you first open the box, the first thing that you're going to see is your user manual. Underneath that you're going to see a, uh, it looks like a, a remote with uh, some cabling. And then on the side here we have, looks like we have some cabling and a grounding wire. Next you'll find three 40 amp fuses and three 50 amp fuses. And last but not least is the inverter itself. All right, let me tell you a little bit about this Bouge RV 12 volt inverter. Uh, first of all, it's made out of all aluminum, which is nice. On the input side, it has your uh, two connections right here. Uh, they are clearly color coded and they are opposite of each other, which is always nice for safety features. And they have these covers, which, uh, you know, covers the terminal. So that's, again, a nice safety feature. There are also two fans on the sides. And then on the output side, we have our two AC receptacles right here. One is a 15 amp receptacle and the other is a 20 amp receptacle. We have our off on switch. We have a fault light, a power light, a 485 communication port right here that is for connecting to the uh, remote that we have and also a five volt, three amp uh, USB A port right here. And then what's nice is we also have a hard wire connection right here. So you can actually connect this inverter to like a small sub panel. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and start doing a little bit of testing on this inverter, and then we'll go ahead and open it up so I can show you the internals. We will also be plugging in the remote to kind of show you what all it displays. And another thing about this inverter before we get started is that it has its own app. So we will be downloading the app and using the app while we're doing our testing to see what all it displays as well. All right, well, I have this Bouge RV 12 volt, 2000 watt inverter connected directly to an Orient Power battery. Now, the reason I chose this one is because it has a 200 amp BMS inside. So that way it can handle any of the power that I'm gonna be pulling from this inverter. The first thing I do wanna show you though is that the, uh, the standby amp draw from this inverter is right around a half an amp. So that would be between six and seven watts. So if you're gonna use a typical 100 amp hour battery, you can expect to be able to leave this thing on unattended for what, 200 hours? So, you know, eight days, something like that. All right, I went ahead and downloaded the app that goes along with this inverter. Uh, there is a QR code in the manual, or you can just do a search on Bouge RV in your, Apple, in your Apple Store or your Google Play Store. So I went ahead and downloaded the app, uh, and you have to create an account, which I don't really like, but I went ahead and did it. Uh, you just have to put in your email, and then it will send you a code, blah, 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 blah stuff like that. And then once you get all set up and you connect to your inverter, here's what you'll see. So what I'm gonna do is gonna, I'm gonna go ahead and click on the BV Inverter 2000 and it will bring up all the information about the inverter. At the top, it shows us the AC output voltage, which is zero because I have nothing plugged into it. It shows the battery voltage at 13 volts. Uh, you can turn the unit on and off. Uh, in real time, it shows the voltage of the inverter on the AC side, which is 120 volts. Uh, the current is zero amps coming out of the AC side, and the frequency is 60 hertz. And it does show the device temperature at 69 degrees Fahrenheit, which you can switch between Celsius and Fahrenheit. If you scroll down a little bit, it does show you data of the day, which is kind of nice. Uh, it shows that I've had this on for 14 minutes. The maximum power, uh, the maximum voltage of the battery, and the minimum voltage of the battery for today. If we click on the uh, cog at the top right, you can see the device name, the software version, the serial number. Oh, they, they, oh you can also see the over discharge voltage, the over discharge reminder voltage, and you can change the frequency and the AC voltage in the settings. All right, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and grab a thousand watts worth of power and start powering a thousand watts. Um, and we'll just do that for like five minutes to see if anything kind of heats up. We'll check it with a thermal camera. This thing should handle a thousand watts 
without any problems whatsoever. After that, we're gonna go ahead and kick it up to close to 2000 watts. And we're gonna see if it can power 2000 watts for five minutes. And I'll also have this amp clamp to be able to compare what the amperage coming out of the battery is compared to what the uh, amperage coming out of the AC side is. So let's get started. All right, before I start plugging in all my equipment, I'm gonna go ahead and just show you that it does have a pure sine wave. So I can trust that it's not gonna start damaging my sensitive stuff. All right, and also before we start this test, I do wanna show you that I did connect up the remote. Uh, the cabling is pretty long. I wanna say it's probably at least 20 feet. And you can see on the display, it shows that the voltage of the battery is 13 volts. It shows the output of the voltage of the AC side is 120 volts. It shows, uh, you know, like a symbol for the battery. Uh, that's probably just basing it on the voltage, which doesn't really apply to lithium iron phosphate batteries. And it shows the output wattage going on right now, which is 45 watts. It does show also that it is 22 degrees Celsius uh, at the inverter. And it has a little symbol of a sunshine with a little smiley face. I think that's not needed. Um, I do like the color format. It's very nice to easy and easy to see. There are three buttons at the bottom. There's the on off button and that turns the whole unit on and off. There is a AC button which will switch the AC from 110 volts to 120 volts. So depending on what your preference is. And it also has a backlight button which will turn off the backlight. It is also designed so you can easily mount it onto like into the wall of your RV. So it makes it so it'd be a nice clean installation. Okay, to get my thousand watts for this test, I'm just gonna be using my new wave induction cooktop and I think I'm just gonna set it for like 900 watts. And then if I need, I can go ahead and just turn on another 200 watt heater to kind of give us that roughly a thousand watts. And then I'm gonna run that for five minutes and then I'm gonna go ahead and punch everything on, which is going to be the induction cooktop at 1300 watts a 500 watt heater and a 200 watt heater. So all of that added together should be roughly 2000 watts. Uh, let's go ahead and put the app on the screen right now so you can actually see that as I start the test. So let's go ahead and start with 1000 watts. Start my timer. And you can see on the, the app on the screen, we are pulling, we're pulling 864 watts which equates to, uh, on the DC side, that is uh, 81 point, it's, it's going down, but it's 81, 81 amps. So now we're gonna go ahead and kick on a 200 watt heater. On the app that you can see, you can, you can see that the, uh, the wattage on the app is now at 1064. Oh, and now it's 1100, 1122. But it should start to taper down once the heating element in that heater uh, gets all the way warm. All right, it looks like we're sitting stable at 1,050 watts. So we're gonna go ahead and run that for five minutes. Just to let you know, that is roughly 98 amps coming out of the battery right now. All right, well, it has been a little over five minutes and this uh, Bouge RV inverter has been running 1,000 watts without any issues whatsoever. Let's go ahead and check out the temperature just to make sure everything is staying within specs. Okay, there is the inverter. Um, you can actually see I am charging my tablet right now, which is uh, 90 degrees. The inverter itself, uh, I mean, everything is staying below 100 degrees Fahrenheit, which is well below what it, what it needs to be. Uh, the cabling, uh, we're looking at 90 degrees, 92 degrees Fahrenheit on the cables. Um, I mean, no, no big deal whatsoever. Uh, the one thing that surprised me was the remote. The remote right here, the display, it's actually 105 degrees. It's the warmest thing about this inverter. So that's, I, I, I found that pretty surprising actually. So that is something definitely that you would want to uh, have turned off for most of the time and uh, turn it on whenever you just need to look at the display. All right, so now I'm gonna go ahead and just turn on everything and I'm gonna boost it up to that 2000 watts to see if it can handle it for another five minutes. Here we go, turning on 500 watt heater. And the wattage on the new wave is going up to 1300 watts. 
You can see on the display, it's showing 1700, 1800, 1830, 1845. All right, I'm only getting up to about 1800 watts, so I'm gonna go ahead and swap out some stuff with this uh, Griddler, which is 1100 watts. Oh, and it turned off. As soon as I turned that Griddler on, which is 1100 watts, we were at 1100, yeah, we were, we were at like 2600 watts there for a second. So let me go ahead and restart everything and we'll try to get right at 2000 watts. All right, I got everything reset, so let's go ahead and try to get that 2000 watts. All right, I've got the Griddler on, which is 1100 watts, and I've got the new wave. You know what, I think my battery is shutting off. No, my battery is just fine. You can see it's still at 13.08 volts at 53%. It was only at 60% when I started this test. But this inverter does not like 2000 watts. I also noticed that it takes a while for it to kind of start back up. Let's go ahead and turn off the battery, turn it back on, turn on the inverter. Okay, I'm gonna to try to really slowly step this up. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do the 1100 watt cooktop, and then I'm gonna set my new wave to 600 watts, so that should give us like 1700. And then I'm gonna do that 200 watt heater, which should be right around 1900 watts. And we'll see what happens there. Let's turn on the, uh, the griddler. And that's giving us like right at 1140 watts. And then we're gonna turn on the new wave at 600 watts. That's giving us 16, 1700 watts. Looks like we're pulling about 171 amps. So let's go ahead and turn on the 200 watt heater. 200 watt heater is now turned on. We're now at 1936. Ooh, it got up to 1984 before it shut off. So this 2000 watt inverter does not have any overhead whatsoever. Uh, once it gets right at 2000 watts, the unit will shut off, which is actually pretty good. I would rather have that than this thing have like a, an overhead of 2500 watts. I mean, cause these cables are not, not set for that at all. Okay, now let's go ahead and take a look at the inside of the Bougier V 12 volt inverter. All right, first of all, I just want to let you know that uh, I am not a professional electrician or engineer, so I don't know what a lot of this stuff does. What I can tell you is that the cabling going from the inside of the inverter to the board, it looks to be four 10 gauge cables. And then also on the negative is another set of four 10 gauge cables. We have a couple of good size heat sinks <coughs> for the MOSFETs. And I'm guessing this right here is the temperature, uh, the temperature probe for monitoring the temperature inside the unit. Uh, we have our, we have four capacitors right here. Uh, it looks like we have another monitor right here that monitors the AC output. But again, I'm just kind of, this is a very high overview because I really don't know what a lot of this stuff does. If you do, please leave it in the comments. I think a lot of people would like to see this. I also do notice that the fans, which is nice, are blowing right on the heat sinks to keep everything cool. Uh, overall, I believe that the, just the whole setup in general looks pretty clean. You know, I don't see a ton of glue holding stuff together. All of the solder points look to be pretty clean. So overall, everything inside in my amateur view, everything looks pretty clean and tidy. So let me go ahead and give you a real close view just so you can get uh, further information from it if you like. What do I think of the Bougier V 2000 watt 12 volt pure sine wave inverter? Well, I think it holds up to everything that it's wanting to do. You know, I like the all aluminum case, uh, the safety features when it comes to hooking up the DC cables, and also having a, a hardwired connection for a 2000 watt inverter. That's, you don't find those very often. So that's a very nice feature to have. Also the 20 amp plug and the 15 amp plug is another added feature. Along with 
uh, a Bluetooth connection so you can use your phone to actually monitor what's going on and actually be able to turn it on and off from your phone. Uh, and also it does include uh, that remote uh, with, a, you know, with a 20 foot cable so that way you can actually mount it into your RV so you can have a, uh, a display right there. When it comes to the performance of this inverter, it did exactly what I expected. At 1000 watts, it performed flawlessly. It didn't get hot at all, and uh, the fans turned on, keeping the whole unit cool. When it came to trying to power it over 2000 watts, when it got close to that 2000 watts, it shut off. And that is exactly what you want as a great safety feature for your inverters. So thank you so much for watching this video. If you have any questions about the Bouge RV 12 volt 2000 watt inverter, please go ahead and leave them in the comments. I'll have a link to this item in my description just in case you want to look further into it. Thank you again and have a great day. Bye bye.